right, guys, what's up? This is Chris Shepard, and we are here for LS Live. Chris Derek Cage in here, the only live call-in show on YouTube. Uh, another great episode today. We have uh, a very special guest, Daniel Grissetti, who is uh, going to be talking to us about confidence. Confidence is the name of the, the show for tonight. Confidence is so important. Super and, important. like, it's so important for your life as a man, mm -hmm. and it's so important for, like, it... You know, even if you're a woman, no matter what you do in your life, you need to have that confidence. And it's so rare. Yeah. And people don't even know how to build confidence. And so we're going to devote this entire show to talking about confidence and ways that you can build it up. And Because um, it is under your control. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's a big misconception about it, too. It's one of those things like, like comedy or being funny. That everyone will say that. I want a guy to be funny. And then everyone kind of thinks they're funny, but they're not really. There's varying degrees of it. Confidence is kind of the same way. There's actual confidence, and there's a sort of misinterpretation of confidence, I think. So we'll talk about that a bit later. But let's get let's get Daniel Mercetti on the line here. Uh, and uh, beep uh, is... <laughs> what's up, Daniel? Daniel, are you there? Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? <laughs> all right, all right. Awesome. Welcome, Daniel. So Daniel is... He's one of our experts on confidence. He's one of our dating coaches out of London and L.A. sometimes. And um, you're one of the most confident guys I've ever met. <laughs> you got the charisma thing going down, and you do acting, and you know you, you're the best, one of the best reviews instructors that we've ever had. Um, so what's what makes you an expert on confidence? What's your secret, Daniel? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because I've never really considered myself an expert on confidence, but it's something that I've noticed. Um, yeah, it's the difference between the things that I attempt and the things that I don't attempt, and so. When I got into the dating industry God, 11 years ago or something like that, um, I realized that it's, it's one thing to feel confident when you're in your comfort zone. It's another thing to step out and try to meet people and suddenly realize that you're, you know, a little bit scared. Right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, ah. and so I thought about this a lot. You know, there was a point in my life where I was trapped within myself and I couldn't get out and meet people and I was so, you know, unconfident going out to meet people that I was closer to jumping off the edge of a train platform because I was so trapped within myself and afraid to jump out. So that was a real, you know, confidence, charisma, all these kind of things that people say, yeah, Vercetti's really good at this stuff. It's because it was life and death for me, right? Like yeah. it was literally that serious. So I've sat down, I've thought about it, I've implemented it, I've decoded it, I've broken it down because it was literally the thing that took me off the edge and then I vowed that when I got off the edge that I was going to help other men to do the same as well because I meet so many people who you know they're suffering from a lack of confidence and they want to get out and they want to meet people or they want to go for the promotion in their career or they want to build a business whatever it is and they lack that confidence and so I saw that you know when you gave them that or you show them how to do that in their life it unlocks so many different areas, mm, right? Yeah. So that was that was really what kind of drove me and, and enabled me to to get good in this area. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's a powerful story, Daniel. And you know, I like. I think we all kind of have a similar story. Like we all kind of got into this stuff because we had at least a period in our t in, in our life where we, we were we were suffering. I mean, everybody suffers from low self confidence at some point. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I was you know a teenager, I was I was you know, didn't have any confidence to speak of and one of the things with with being uh less confident is i saw the benefits of confidence i saw other people getting the benefits of confidence and i was like and and i was pissed off <laughs> i was like i was like these confident jerks are getting all the success and here i am like like doubting myself but i'm actually doing like putting putting more work into it sometimes and not getting results because I, because I didn't have uh, the confidence to follow through on, mm -hmm. you know, the talent or the, the hard work that you, that you've done. Um, mm -hmm. and so I guess to, just to start off this whole conversation about confidence, like what is, what is confidence? What do we mean by confidence when we're talking about it? Yeah. How would you guys, I mean, how would you guys describe confidence? You had to put it into a, a sentence or a paragraph. Uh, Daniel, how would you describe it? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. You know, I look at it like the resolve and the resilience to go for the things that you want. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right? Your ability to move past fear in order to get the things that you want. 
Yeah. That's uh, my definition is actually very similar to yours. I've always said it's the ability to uh, have power over the voice in your head, which mm -hmm. which essentially is the same thing you're saying, right? Because it's normally Absolutely. people say I want to be confident and even have an idea of what confidence is. You know, like oh, he's the guy that does this. It's not that they don't know to do those things. It's just because they can't, right? They get caught mm -hmm. up in the voice in their head and they get too scared and they don't make those choices. So for me, that's what it's always been, and, and it sounds like from your description, you feel the same way. Uh, yeah, because I, I think. I think society tells us that confidence is like thinking that you're awesome. Yeah. It's thinking you're great, like nothing bad is going to happen. And that is actually, that's what, that causes low self-esteem. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in real life, there always is a risk of fail. Not everything is awesome. And if everything needs to be awesome for you to be confident, you're never, <laughs> you're not confident. You're never going to take action. Yeah, you're never going to take action. Yeah, you're never going to take action. You're not going to get there in the first place. Uh, so... So confidence, I think that a lot of people think that confidence is judging yourself and saying, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But that's narcissism. Mm -hmm. And what is real confidence is actually not judging yourself at all. It's, it's actually being focused on whatever it is you're doing. So if you think of a time when you were really confident, like if you think of a time when you're doing something that you're actually really good at. So let's say, let's say it's something really easy like playing a video game. All right, or or for me, like I'm I play guitar. I'm when I'm playing a song that I really know well, I feel confident. I don't feel confident when I'm playing songs that I don't know well. When I'm playing a song that I really know well, I am not thinking, oh, I'm doing really good at this, right? I'm just in the song, right? I'm just in the song, and and if I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I'm doing really well at this, I'm being distracted, right? And and if I'm thinking. Am I doing well? Am I doing well? Am I doing well? Oh, is this good? Was that the right chord? If I'm questioning myself, I'm going to screw up and I'm not being confident either. So it's actually being, it's actually confidence is really just being present and in the moment. And, and it's the skill of getting to that place, even when you're, even when you're outside of your comfort zone, let's say, or even when you're in a difficult situation. Um, yeah. I have a comment and this goes more towards you too, Daniel, because I know you have a theater background as well. And I was really heavily into theater when I was younger. I remember uh, when I was taking singing lessons, one of the things that my, my teacher told me when I was uh, learning how to sing was they said, don't try to hit the notes. The wrong way to go about singing is, is attempting and trying to hit the notes. The way you should do it is you should sort of, um, I can't remember how, how she put this, but it's essentially you, you already hit the notes in your head and you just let your voice get there, right? So it's sort of like, yeah, you see it happening and you just, you just let your voice carry it, carry it there. And, and if you try to force your voice to hit those notes, you're never going to do it. It's just not going to work. Um, and that was always a big thing for me because it changed how I went about not just singing, but even acting as well. Um, I don't know if it was something similar that you experienced because I know acting is a very, it's something you, you need to have a certain amount of confidence to pull off. Otherwise, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, do you know, it's interesting because I've seen some of the most unconfident people that I've met have been actors. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's true. And, 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 I, and I know why. Now I know why. I didn't understand it before. I thought that it was, I thought that confidence was part and parcel of being an actor. But actually what happens is for a lot of actors, they come into that field because they're not confident mm -hmm. or they're because they're shy. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they, because they're being different characters, yeah. it allows them to step out of themselves. Right, so they almost put on the mask of the character, and now they can be whatever they want to be. They can be a king, they can be a queen, they can be have the bravado. And so, what I realized is that one, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do that. Right, like I, you know, that's a choice for some people, but for me, I wanted to exist happy in my real life and not just on the stage. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and and I wanted to, I wanted to make a point as well that like. Everyone's confident and insecure about certain things, right? There's, there's, everyone's got something that they're insecure about. Like, that's just the condition of being human, all right? And that part of knowing confidence or knowing that we do confidence, we're, we're not just confident, we do confidence. There's processes that we do within our mind to be confident of something. So Chris, were you talking about um, when you're playing the guitar and there's songs that you, that you know um, that you're confident with, You've done it over and over again. You've got yeah. to a level of competence where you can now relax and play with it. Now, here's the next level of that is, and you mentioned it, being present in the moment. So when we're focused on the process, like a kid, right? If you see a kid learning how to walk, kids, the, the kids just, when you call the kid confident or insecure, the kid's just doing. Yeah. Kids just in the moment. The kid knows that he's seeing these big things, these big kids walking around, and he wants to do that as well. And he's fully invested in learning how to do that, right? And so that brings a level of kind of 
you know, quote unquote confidence there as well. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just knowing that we have, as we grow up, we get this um, feedback from our education system, which is failure or success, right? Yeah. That That's kind of where it's drilled into us. We get, you know, you can fail or you can succeed. With a baby, you want to say, right, this baby might fail at walking. No, like, <laughs> dude, sit down, man, you keep falling over. No, I don't want to tell the baby to sit down. Dude, get up, do it again, do it again, do it again mm -hmm. until in school, we get the F grade, mm -hmm. right? or we get the A star. And now we've got this thing drilled into our brain of failing or succeeding instead of just enjoying the process of learning and education. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's really, really true. So what are some other things? You talk about the education system. I think the education system does like do a bad job of, of teaching people how to be confident, uh, how, to, how to live like a good life sometimes. I think there's a lot of bad values sometimes that are instilled by the education system. What are some other things in society that are causing people mm -hmm. to be less confident? Like what are the confidence killers? Yeah, I mean, my, my beautiful industry, the entertainment industry, <laughs> does yeah. a lot of damage, you know, in terms of you see the bravado. Because I think in mainstream media, that's what is kind of shown a lot of the time, the bravado, right? And the kind of the facade and, you know, the guys who are jacked up. And there's nothing wrong with being jacked up. With, you know, if you're into, into the gym, yeah. you work out a lot. But, but it becomes the symbol of masculinity. Like that is the, the, the epitome of masculinity and that's confidence where it's a lot of those guys who, are, you know, massive jacked up, some, a lot of them were bullied in school. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. they, they got jacked up in order to say so it never happened again. I know so yeah. many guys who've been into martial arts because they were bullied. And so they said, it's never gonna happen to me again. I'm gonna learn this thing. So it came from insecurity and that's what, you know, whatever, what, and for me, I've got this thing, which is, Whatever it takes, like whatever the route is, it doesn't matter. Like, if you want to get successful in business or in dating, whatever it is that started you, it doesn't matter as long as it, you know, it propels you and you learn how to process the inner demon so that you're not kind of projecting onto people. Like if someone had um, insecurity about being bullied and now they go around as the bully and forcing themselves onto people, then that's a bad thing, right? But if they learn how to deal with that and you know, process it in a healthy way, then it's good. But yeah, those those kind of symbols of confidence, you know, how a guy's supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. Anyone has told me how you're supposed to behave, and we see it in mass media. I mean, it's usually it usually has an agenda behind it. Yeah, right? you think, like, I've always found that those people that write those things, I assume <laughs> this is the case. They must be living vicariously through what they're writing, in a exactly. sense. You know, I think a lot of the guys that write this stuff for women maybe weren't necessarily the most popular people in school, and are now are sort of getting their their, their sort of revenge maybe by writing these characters in a way that, that they wish they were like, you know, or that yeah. uh, maybe they can live vicariously through them. And because of that, they get it wrong, you know, and yeah. it still appears right to, to a mainstream audience. Like, oh yeah, that is really what, what confidence is. But in, in practice, that's not really what it's about. And I think, and you kind of hit on it here, that confidence has a lot more to how you act when times are bad and when, when situations aren't necessarily to your benefit. Than how you act when they are, and that seems to how that seems how it's portrayed more often in the media is sort of like everything's going well for the person, and and they sort of have this this sort of slick attitude about it, and that's sort of supposed to be confidence, but that doesn't really that's not really confidence. Yeah. Um, no. So it's so, and that, and that, no, I think that's why the new James Bond, like you know the James Bond with Daniel Craig, that's why for me that one is I, I prefer that one because you know. Bad, bad stuff happens to him, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he, you know, he, he's a, he gets abused. I went up for an audition um, a couple of weeks back and, you know, it was a secret, it was secretive. So they gave us a, a script that was already out and it was the punishment, the torture scene from, I think it's Casino Royale where he's hitting him under the chair and he's, you know, he's balls and stuff. <laughs> and uh, and he's, he's in a bad way, you know, and you're seeing how he deals with the conflict. And that brings me back to something that is, Conflict illuminates character, right? Mm -hmm. In storytelling, in, in our life, um, I say with, with all our clients um, who come to us, I, I always say when we're dealing with relationships that you don't know someone until you see them in conflict. Mm -hmm. And so even for yourself, I, I always ask myself, I'm like, in, in areas in my life where I'm in conflict, that's when it's gonna reveal who I am the most. And that's when I wanna show up with grace, with authenticity, and with that level of resilience or self-reliance that is needed to move forward and to progress. Right? But that's right. a very good kind of look at it. No, I think, so if we're talking about things that, that are bringing your confidence down, education system, the whole pass-fail thing, 
because this is the one thing that people don't realize and, and guys get it like especially in dating this is a big deal because in real life so in school failing is really bad you fail mm-hmm. you get you, you, you fail a class you have to do it over again you're not supposed to fail 98 percent of the people pass and if you fail you're in the right at the very bottom now the problem is in real life that's not the way it works Right. When it comes to in sports, if you take a shot on net, ninety eight percent of the time you might fail. Right. Mm. Uh, in dating, you meet a girl you like. Listen, odds are less than fifty percent this is going to turn into something. Um, in business, you, you know, ni- you know, most of the time businesses or like you know any given deal is probably uh, likely to fail. But you get free tries. You get free tries on all this stuff. So you, you, you tr- if you're a salesperson, you, you have 10 leads that you're following up on and maybe two or three of them wind up uh, turning into deals. And that's good. That's good. But we learn in school that no, 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 no. You need to have a one. Failure is bad and you got to avoid the failure. And if you, and if you try to, if you're scared of failure in real life, you can't play basketball. You can't date women. You can't be in business if you're afraid of failure. There's a whole bunch of things that you just cannot do if you're afraid of failure because the natural state of things in any kind of competitive, difficult situation is for it to not work out. And if it works out one time out of 10, it's still, it's worth it because there's big payoffs. Um, that's one thing. Then you got social media. Everybody's showing off their highlights of their lives and stuff like that. And you're comparing it to your to to you know the the 23 hours a day that you're doing nothing, and then the one hour a day you're doing something moderately interesting. I mean, that's how everybody's life is, though. But we we we're constantly comparing ourselves against other people's highlight reels, and and then yeah, just television and all the media and stuff like that. Like, man, uh, you know, I mean, I I see guys with this in dating. Where guys are like, oh, I don't have enough to say, and and you realize like, when was, what are they comparing themselves against? What, 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 why do they think they don't have good conversation? And the reason is because they're comparing themselves to like guys on TV, and you know that guy who's picking up the girl on TV. Somebody wrote that script. <laughs> Somebody spent like a day writing their, their banter. Days, yeah. Well. yeah. And if you, if, if you if you if instead. So don't compare yourself against that guy. If instead you're going on, you go to the, like you're on the bus or you're in a public situation, you're at a bar, and you wanna and you wanna see what real people do. You listen in to the conversation of the dude next to you who's trying to pick up the girl next to you. Listen to what that guy says. That's your real competition, right? Because that guy probably sucks, <laughs> right? Listen into other people's conversations to find out what it's really like. Because we don't get inside other people's conversations. Even even on social media, like you're, again, you're only seeing the highlight reel of people's lives. L- listen and pay attention to what people are doing uh, when you're out there. And you realize, like, what is the average guy talking to the average hot girl at the bar about? Hey, so, uh, you know, what do you think about this neighborhood? Yeah, I really like it. Like, the real estate values are going way up. You know, I bought a <laughs> condo, like, four years ago. It's boring! Boring! Um, but... But we get these, these skewed perspectives that cause our self-esteem to come down. So, okay, how does confidence affect your dating life? That's that's because that's what get, people are watching this for. That's what people are interested in. Yeah, Dan, you wanna you wanna comment on that? Absolutely. So I guess you can look at it in different stages, right? Like the first stage in terms of dating is meeting, right? Like if you yep. if you don't meet, you can't build a relationship. All mm-hmm. right, and so. That's where the confidence is going to play out in the first place. Chris, you mentioned failing, right? Like any guy who has got good in this field or who, who has his dating life handled, who didn't have it handled before, who's learned this stuff, because this is all, you know, deliberate practice. This, is, this isn't this is some magical, mystical skill set. This is learned behavior. They didn't start off good, all right? And so they failed their way to greatness, mm-hmm. as it were. And so that's where it starts. If you're afraid of failing or if there's a lack of confidence in actually going up and meeting, then you won't even start the conversations. Some guys won't even leave their house, all right? So that's where it first starts. Once you're in the conversation, then you've got to be progressing the conversation. You've got to be building, you know, attraction and and vibing. And more than that, just like being, I don't want to say being yourself. I'm going to say putting your best self forward, right? When you're confident, you have the, the, um, you know, you have the mindset where 
what you say is valuable, what you say is fun, exactly. you're able to go and entertain yourself. But when you're unconfident, now you start to think about, ah, oh, is this going to be entertaining is enough? Is this good enough? Like, it's always like, is it good enough? enough? She's going to yeah, be bored. Like, is, is she going to like this? And they're always asking. It's like, no, dude, just go talk to her. If she exactly. doesn't like what you're saying, she'll leave. Exactly. And, <laughs> and, and that, and, and, and that and requires confidence. Yeah. I like, so what are the thoughts that go through the, the, the mind of an unconfident guy that messed them up? Because I, 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 I'm teaching these guys. You hear it, right? You hear, uh, uh, she's not going to want to talk to me. I don't know what to say. I left because she was getting, uh, the conversation was, she was losing interest in the conversation. It's like, dude, no, she wasn't. You ran out of things to say and she left. I ran out of things to say that's good enough. Um, she didn't want, I felt like it was too early to get her phone number. I I got her phone number, but she's probably not going to answer the phone. Well, I, I, I called her up and she answered the phone, but she's probably not going to uh, meet up with me for a date. Well, she would meet up with me for a date, but it's probably not going to go anywhere. Um, though the date is going, it, it's, it seems all right, but she probably doesn't want to come back with me. She came back to my yeah. house, but she probably just really wanted to, like, you know, hang she out or watch TV. Uh, she probably isn't interested in, in hooking up with me. Uh, well, we had, you know, we had sex, but she doesn't want to, uh, she's probably not going to call or answer my calls afterwards. And, and like, if you have low self-confidence, you're constantly, constantly sabotaging yourself basically with those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever had those thoughts and ever acted on them, because I, I used to have that. And especially, um, if you're, if you're dating a woman, let's say out of your league, you know, who's more attractive than previously, I was like, oh, well, it's not going to work this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... And I used to always just go to my, say to myself like, okay, she's probably not gonna answer the call, answer the phone when I call her, but I'm just gonna call her just just to, just to see. Oh my god, she answered the phone. Well, always go to the next, you know, always move to the next step, right? Because if you're selling yourself short, yeah, you're never gonna learn. I would just say going back a little bit, um, this whole thing, and I, I should probably I should probably state this because a lot of guys are probably thinking this, and we talked about it already. Running out of things to say. Having all these negative beliefs about things that Chris was going through in that long list there, like, oh, she probably thinks this, she probably thinks that, probably thinks that. Those things in and of themselves aren't actually happening. What's happening, because you may be experiencing the result of those things, thinking it's those things, but what it is, is you having those thoughts that's making those things happen. So, for instance, the big one that always comes up is running out of things to say. Guys think, oh, I ran out of things to say, so she didn't, she got, you know, she, she left. And the thing is, it wasn't you running out of things to say that made her disinterested. It was you running out of things to say and then getting uncomfortable about that that made her disinterested. And, and it's easy to think that one caused the other, but it's actually the emotional state that you were in that created the situation, not the situation itself. And One, one thing a lot of people with low self-esteem do is they mind read. They think they can read other people's minds. And they read them the most negative way. And they read it the most negative way. <laughs> and you always get back like, oh, she didn't, I told a joke and she didn't like it. Yeah. Well, what? Did she tell, did she tell you you didn't like it? Like, I'm watching these guys, right? So you can see, you see her laugh at the joke. And then the guy comes back and you're like, what's going on? <laughs> did she, did, she didn't like it. Did she tell you she didn't like it? No, I just figured she didn't like it. Go back and talk to her. Go, yeah. Like, you're wrong. And you, you don't have telepathy stop it yeah, I, I, I mean, mind reading mind, mind reading things a big one it's a lot of guys you know and, and again I was I was like this in the beginning as well they you know don't understand necessarily until you get out and you start really putting yourself forward that we respond and women respond people respond to the vibe and the energy that we put out there so like what Derek was talking about in terms of um, the emotional state, right? So mm -hmm. that emotional state is transferable. We feel it. We can feel when someone is, you know, anxious or nervous. We can feel when someone is feeling insecure or shy. Now, here's the thing. Women may not actually know that you're feeling anxious and insecure and shy. Like, they may not know. It might just come across as weird or creepy and make them feel awkward and makes them want to get away, right? Because they, they don't mind for either. All they can mm -hmm. really see is the body language. They can see what you're emitting and projecting, and therefore they just go, well, what is up? Because it, the amount of women that I speak to who, when you tell them that guys get a little bit nervous going up and approaching, they're completely baffled. They're yeah. like, what? Why would you be nervous to talk to little me? Like, well, I'm half his size, why? Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? And so when they see these 
physical signals of anxiety or nervousness, it doesn't register in their brain that this guy might just be nervous because he's going up and approaching someone. Yeah. It just she just reads that behavior isn't behavior that makes me comfortable. Yep. I'm gonna get out of here. All right. So being anxious, being nervous, it's not that look and here's the thing. I what, what I say to all my, my clients is, is feel the fear, do it anyway. Like do it afraid. Yeah. Like, do it afraid. It, you know, they, I, I don't care about, fear is not a legitimate reason not to take action. It's really not, right? And so I say go and do it anyway. And by the act of doing it and, and stepping up and moving forward and moving forward confidently, it actually dissipates the, the fear anyway, right? Yeah. It just disappears. It yeah. makes it addicting. So, it's a great feeling actually when you can conquer it. Absolutely. And yeah. so, so here's, what does feeling confident, what does feeling confident really feel like? Like what, how do you know when you're confident when you're in the moment there? How do you get there? There's f- how to get there, or how does it? Feel? That, how does it feel? How do you know when you're there? Yeah. You you know everyone's had it. Everyone's had it. You know there there will be things where you you just know you're confident when you have this flow to you, where you have a playfulness, a lightness, an ease, and a grace to you, where you're not in your head thinking and trying to analyze shit. You're just literally in the moment and focused on you know other people. Mm-hmm. We used to call it, in, in, in acting terms, we call it turning the cameras out, right? Yeah. So you're not observing, what am I doing? You know, what, what, is, what are they thinking about me? You know, what are they, you know, do they want me to stay or anything like that? It's the camera, uh, the cameras are out. Your internal cameras are faced out and they're focused on connecting with people. Yeah. That's what it's focused on, right? It's that- not focused on trying to read the mind. It's focused on what's, what is awesome about this person? I mean, what is interesting about this person? What 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 how can i make this fun that, like, what can i do to, to really connect and just have a real playful vibe with these people right? so to true really value the playfulness and when that, when you've got that kind of mindset then there's an ease there's a relaxation because you're not trying too hard yeah you know and you become more perspective hard. perceptive like, like exactly uh, uh, for me a big change was when i went from wondering what people thought of me which it just drives you crazy basically because you have no uh-huh. idea to watching people's body language and I watch people's body language. Somebody crosses their arms. I'm like, okay, why is this person crossing their arms? I might even ask them. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sitting there wondering like, oh, am I doing good? Am I doing good? And if people are smiling, it's all it's all on, basically. If I'm getting good body language, then uh, I you know, don't even think about it. But mm-hmm. but that's turning the cameras out. It's, it's paying attention to this person. And, and you know, you see her cross her arms like, hey, are you cold? And, and she's like, oh, just a little bit. And usually it's, a lot of times it's something like that. Um, but yeah. turning those cameras out, I think, is absolutely right. That, that's what uses a whole lot of horsepower in your brain, right? Like, like that's when you stumble over your words. Like, I used to do this. I used to tr- get tripped up all the time, and because I was tr- I was overthinking things, and I was holding myself back. I couldn't. I could. I had a stutter. I, c- I couldn't finish my sentences sometimes. Yeah, you ever have those moments when you're talking with someone, maybe a good friend, or maybe even a stranger, but you're talking about something you're really passionate about, and you feel like it's almost like your brain goes on autopilot because you're sort of just like oh man, that's so crazy, and you're talking, and the idea that you're in a conversation with someone doesn't even, that isn't even a part of that thought process. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I like what you said, Daniel. I learned the same thing in acting too when we were learning uh, method acting, which was, I'm sure you're familiar with, but essentially mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, it was, it was not acting, uh, the, the idea of it. But the, uh, the, the concept that we had to do was essentially the same thing, where it was like, if you were on stage in a scene and you're thinking, this is my next line, or I'm speaking this line, or I'm even someone in a play, then you're not acting. And the only way to truly act was to not act in the sense that you had to be that person in that moment. Anyway, method acting is a whole big thing, but the idea behind that, which I think rings true with what you said as well, is that if there's any part of you, whether it's acting or talking to women, that's thinking, I'm in a situation where I'm talking to a woman and and you're sort of self-aware of that whole concept, you're not totally confident in the moment in that that case. And I think what you described is actually a really good explanation of what it feels like, because it really is you're not even thinking about the fact that you're you're talking to a woman trying to attract her. That's not even part of it. It's just all about you living in that moment, feeling those those feelings and being totally content with that. And I mean, I've always found when I've in, on my best days and or nights, I should say, um, <laughs> were always situations in which I was kind of like, there's what I expect to happen and what uh, in the unexpected. And if what happens that is what I expected, and that's great uh, because I'm confident. I think things are going to go well. But if they don't and she says something I'm not expecting, 
that's even better. And that's actually more exciting because it was exactly. it was in those moments that I truly got to be like, okay, now I get to experience something I've not experienced or couldn't even think what I would experience yet. This is very exciting. And and I think that's the, the big shift that I had when I started to get good was because I didn't fear those those moments anymore. There was more of an excitement about it. Um, yeah, that willingness to dive into the unknown is is so key. Like it's it's so it's so key in building confidence. And you know, there there are so many uh, moments in our life when we can do that and try and experiment with what it feels like to just go. I've got an acting teacher um, over in LA, and she she has the technical term. Um, you got to excuse my French, which is fuck it. Yes, <laughs> literally, yeah. just throw your hands, just go fuck it. Let's do this. Yeah. You know, let's try. I had a I had a crazy little experience when I was over in Thailand, and and um, I was there on I was there on my own, and I'm driving around this island now on on a, on a scooter. My foot, I have no reception, right, and on my phone. No one knows where I am. Like I, I've left my friends in Bangkok. I've gone gone over to this island, and I'm driving around, and I come to this little clearing. Um, which just looks like it just goes into the forest. It's just, it's just a part in, in the trees and it looks spooky as hell, right? And I stop there. <laughs> Not a good idea. Go, Don't go. <laughs> I, I, oh, this is the thing. I'm looking, I'm going, you know what? No one knows where I am. I don't even know. I don't know what's up there. And I was like, fuck it. Let's go. And I yeah. drove in. And when I got through the clearing and I got through to the other side, I came across this incredible bar. It was made all from wood this massive kind of hut bar thing. The only people that were there were, were this man and his wife and it overlooked the whole island. So down into the forest and then took down to the ocean and the beach. And I just sat there and I had this fresh coconut and I sat there and it was just, for me, it was just such a metaphor for my life, which was go venture into the unknown, mm. venture forth. I like that. That's awesome. I always liked the, uh, the visual. If you guys saw that movie, Dr. Strangelove, of the guy riding the atom bomb down on the, as, as it, you know, drops from the plane, he's got the cowboy hat. Yeah. He's just like, woo! And that was always a visual I had when I'd find myself in those really tough situations. It was kind of like, man, you know, kind of what you said, <laughs> fuck it. It's like, you're going down. Like, enjoy the ride. Like, you know, you're going to die or the bad thing's going to happen regardless. You can't control it at, at this point any longer. So you may as well have fun in, in the act of going through it. And, and, uh, and yeah. So, Derek, just on that point, like, the... The, the the hesitancy that we face is usually the thing that brings the failure as well. Like if yeah. you like you're saying, if you if you don't just go all in, the dipping the toe in and playing like half heartedly is usually the yeah. thing that actually like let's say with a woman, you're talking to a woman and you're kind of dipping your toe in because you're kind of nervous and you don't really want to go fully commit just in case she rejects you. That's usually the thing that gets you rejected. Yeah. Right. And so. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing like, um, we, you know, I was, when I was doing my motorbike test, right? Um, there's this... There's I use the same analogy. Huh? It's like riding a dirt bike through a mud pit. Oh, this is you a go, different analogy. If well, you go but, uh, slow, you get stuck. It doesn't work. You have to oh, yeah, go full true. speed through the mud pit. You that's go full <laughs> speed. But even, even with this, you know, when you're, when you're getting your motorbike license, you've got to do a U-turn in the road, right? Oh, and yeah. the instructor always says... Look the way you're facing. Look, look the way, face the way you want to go. Different right? analogy. Look the yeah. way you want to go. And inevitably, what happens is because you're doing a U turn, there's a curb there. And you're thinking, shit, I'm going to hit the curb. I'm going to hit the curb. I'm going to hit the curb. And what happens? Your focus, your attention is on the curb, and you will hit the curb. Guaranteed. The minute that you go, you know what? I'm going that way. I'm doing a, I'm doing a 180 degree turn. And that's the way I want to go back up the face of the road. I'm not going to pay attention to the curve at all. I'm going to put my full focus on the way that I want to go. You, you, you clear the turn every single time, yeah. never even come close to the curve. Right. So it's so, and that's part of the, the, the confidence is, is focus. It's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. If we're focusing on the fear and if we're focusing on the negative shit that can happen, then that is usually what we bring into existence. If we focus on the things that we want, we focus on the results that we want, then that's usually what we bring into existence as well. Okay, so this leads to the next question, Daniel. Yeah. How can you improve your confidence? Yeah, it's a great question. So here's the first thing, is make the distinction between when you're confident and when you're unconfident. Like, the, the worst thing that we can do as human beings, as men, is to just label us. Nietzsche had a saying which was, what, labels, what labels me negates me. 
right? So if someone's walking around just going, I'm not confident, I'm not confident, I'm not a confident guy, I'm just insecure, I'm just a shy guy, first and foremost is bullshit, because you're not, you're not like insecure you are not in your, every single- Yeah, you so are not your lack of confidence. You are not exactly. any trait and, that you may have at any given time. And you're not that way in everything that you do, right? Like, they're, 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 even if it's when you're playing video games with your boys and you're like, Boom, I'm you know, I'm good at FIFA 17 and, and you know you play FIFA 17 and you're confident and, you're, and, and your whole body language, everything shifts, right? So the first thing is to, to get rid of those bullshit labels. You know, get rid of those. The second thing is to then say, all right, well, when notice, when I am confident, like how do I behave? How do I how do I hold myself differently? Like what what how do I speak to people? What am I thinking? What's going through my head? How am I breathing? How am I holding my body? And then start to apply that to the things that you want in your life. The, the area, then identify the areas where you're not confident and start to see the difference in behavior. Because the first step in any change, any growth, as we teach in all our programs, is, is awareness. If you, mm -hmm. don't, you don't know what you don't know. Or if you don't know where you're going wrong, you can't change it, right? And so that awareness is the first step. Mm, yeah. So I, I got a question. Um, we've been talking about confidence you know, a lot in the past... 45 minutes or hour, whatever it's been, um, just to bring things back a little bit, you guys want to go and maybe share a, a personal story of a time when you guys were really confident that you can remember a time when, when you, you know, made that choice to, to take the, the more confidence, uh, route and, and did it and maybe what happened because of that. Do you guys have any stories you'd like to, to, uh, explain? I, I have one, if you guys can't think of one right now. Why don't you talk. start and then, yeah. cause, cause I, I'll, you know, I'll let you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Most, so, most of the things that I do, like, there's there's fear attached to it. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like most of I, I'm you know moving over to LA and giving up everything in England. Like you know venturing out on my own in, in business when you know when I was trained when I was when I started out a few years back. Like all all these things they require like approaching approaching attractive women women that I want. Like there's remember this any time that you're growing you're going to feel fear. Yeah. Like literally like every single time that you step outside of your comfort zone to do something that you haven't done before, there's going to be a, a degree of fear, right? Because the brain wants to stay safe. It doesn't want you successful. It wants you to stay safe. Yeah. And so what you learn to do is it, to learn a process of overcoming fear, to learn a process of confidence. That's what's really key. And when you have that process down, you know, as we teach on any of our programs, like that, that process of, getting that confidence, overcoming fear and moving forward, that's the key because it translates into every area of your life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when that fear shows up for me, I go, all right, I know this feeling, sick so many times, and here's what I'm gonna do in order to move past it, right? And sometimes it gets me, so that there are some fears that are bigger than others. Like I do have a, a fear of spiders, right? And that is, that's a, that's a big one for me that I kind of work through and breathe through. And I literally do, you know, all kinds of exercises and reprogramming on that stuff. Right. But, but that was, that was something that was bigger for me. And it's, and the thing is some, most fear is illogical anyway. It's mm, logical. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's illogical. Um, but, um, I was, was going to gonna say pretty much any great success I've had in my life, whether it's with women or anything else, I, I was convinced that I was totally screwed at, at one point. Mm -hmm. I've always you always have the moment in any like difficult achievement where you're like, oh crap, this is not gonna work. Exactly. Oh yeah. well, let's keep going, and then you keep going, and it works. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell this story because I think this is good because it's it's not what people would expect of what a confident story is, and I've done a lot of scary things, you know, acting in front of uh, big groups of people and improv, which is really scary in front of people and talks in front of thousands of people and lots of scary stuff. But this is something that when I think back to my life is a moment when I. Uh, when I was truly confident. And what it was, was I was in high school and I got a gig working as a grip for a children's TV show. And grip, if you don't know, Daniel probably knows, he's in the industry. Basically the guy that handles the courts, follows the camera guy around and handles the courts. And it was me and two other guys. We got, we showed up at the, the zoo in our, in our town is where they were shooting. And we were late because we were goofing off and we were about 15, 20 minutes late. Now the guy that was our, 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 our manager at the time, we hadn't met him yet. He came up to us and he's just basically screaming at us. And this guy's like a big, look, looks like Hagrid from Harry Potter. Massive, like six and a half foot tall guy with a big beard. And he's just like reaming us, being like, you idiots, you're late. This is a professional shoot. You do not do that. You guys are pieces of shit. You do not like, and just reaming into us really, really badly. He was a scary guy. 
And when he was all done his big rant, he said, all right, there's three of you, that, three of you guys, there's three cameramen, I'm one of them, who's working with me? And he looked at the three of us, expecting an answer. And the two guys sitting next to me were like shitting themselves, so I just stood up and I said, me, I'm going to work with you, as confident as I could. And he kind of looked at me as if like, holy shit, I didn't expect him to say that. I didn't expect any of these guys to say anything. And he immediately respected me, and I could see it in his face in that moment, like, fuck, this kid just took a beating and is, you know, owning up to it. And, uh, and for some reason, and he was nice to me the whole rest of the shoot, was a complete, super nice guy. And for some reason, when I look back on my life, there's even all those things I've done, that is one moment where I was like, man, no, that is what, that's what confidence is. That's what being a confident person is. It's mm -hmm. not about all these super, you know, crazy things you think about. It can be just a small little thing, a choice you make in your everyday life that, that makes someone look at you a little bit differently. It makes you feel a lot better about yourself, too. Um, anyway, I wanted to share that story because it's not something people expect. Well, that's one of the results you get of confidence is that yeah. people treat you better. Yeah. People, love, people like people with confidence. They respect it's, them. And, 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 you know, Derek, one of the things um, what I've been really implementing and, and, you know, is the power of decision, you know. And I simplify it for people. I'm just like, look, in every single moment that we are alive, we're making decisions. And at any single point in time, you have a choice whether you're going to make a weak decision or a strong decision, right? And, and it's, it's literally that simple. It's, if you were to spend the day, if we were to spend our days making strong decisions, the strong decisions are the ones in the direction of our goal, in the direction of our dream, whatever it is, then you'd see how quickly results accelerate, okay? And so, again, with awareness, with clarity, with confidence comes acceptance, going, I'm making a weak decision right now. Like, this is a weak decision that I'm making right now. And what would I need to do to make a strong decision right now? Mm. What would I need to do? And by doing that, you know, where Derek, when you sat down and this guy's, you know, there and these other guys are making that weak decision of shine away, you made the strong decision, which was, let's go, let's, let's step up. Let's, you know, move yeah. forward, move towards yeah. that thing. And you get the results from it. You know, and, and I see that I've got a good friend of mine out here as well, and we always talk about the kind of call to adventure. And when I when I teach guys, and that's one of the things I say as well, is that like every single person that you see walking past you, every woman that you see walking past you is a call to adventure. And Joseph Campbell talks about this in the, the Hero of a Thousand Faces, that the when a when a call to adventure comes to you, you have an opportunity to take it or to refuse the call. Refusal of the call usually results in a, in a death of some form, whether it's the death of your confidence, whether it's the death of a goal, a dream, whether it's the death of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so as much as possible, you want to be answering the call to adventure. So for me, I look at it like that. I'm like, all right, here's an adventure. You know, and it could be an adventure of a business. It could be the adventure of a, you know, of a woman that I want to meet. It could be an adventure of a friend that I want to meet. Whatever it is, here's an adventure. There is a call to adventure here. Now my decision in this moment is either going to be weak and shy away from the adventure, or it's going to be strong and dive into the adventure. And it's that simple. Like it doesn't even have to be any more complicated than that. Mm. It's literally that decision in the moment. Exactly, and you like and, and and you yeah, you got to take that call to adventure because that's where the cool stuff happens. It's it's that opportunity that comes to you. It's opportunity, right? People say, "What is luck?" Opportunity. It, luck is just seeing an opportunity and taking it. And most people reject opportunities. They, 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 they're like, oh, I want a better one. No, you get the one. Um, so speaking of opportunities, Daniel, you got some, you, you, you've been, you're doing some, some webinars and some, and some trainings and stuff like that. Can you give us, tell us a little bit about some of those? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's one that we've been doing, um, which is, you know, from the, from the, obviously from the reviews and from the the guys the feedback from the guys it's just been really impacting and and helping men to become more socially confident to become more socially powerful and charismatic um, and that one's called the social charisma blueprint i think you guys will you know put a link put a link yeah to it yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we're throw, gonna, throw it up yeah. in the chat right now because no, i i i i sat in on uh, on some of these webinars um, that you're doing and they're really incredible. You can tell that the guys who sit in on them I mean uh, have a really awesome experience. And they learn a lot 
about themselves and and doing them free like once a week or or even more often i mean that's the kind of stuff that uh that you're doing which is just really really incredible being able to to offer that for a lot of guys so check out the social charisma blueprint by daniel versetti it's a free webinar we're gonna have a link down in the comments of this youtube page so you can sign up for the next one when it's coming up and uh yeah daniel when are you uh when are you teaching next well, I don't you, even know, mate. When am I around? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm around something. There, there, there'll be something up. I think uh, Los Angeles check, and London probably sometime soon, right? Yeah, check, check the board. There'll be, you know, I don't do as many live programs as I used to. So if they, if they, if you see something on the board, then get out there because it you know, might be the last. Like, yeah, I've been this a long time, and, and uh, you know, I don't do as many as I used to as well. Awesome, yeah. well, awesome, Daniel. We really, we really love having you on the show, and uh, thanks again for joining us and talking about confidence with us. Cool. And we're going to start taking some questions, your questions live in just a, a few seconds. So uh, submit your questions or get on the Google Hangouts to participate. We'll be right back. Yo, what's up, fellas? Uh, so we got some questions from the chat. Uh, Derek just had to take off. He's feeling a little bit under the weather, actually. Um, so. Uh, I'm still here and I'm taking your questions and so we've got a bunch of guys on the on the live stream who've been asking some really excellent questions so let's get started with some of those um, one one guy asked a question is this about faking it until you make it uh, and I thought it was a good question because I think a lot of people think that way they think that it's about faking it till you make it and I don't think there is any necessary you don't have to fake anything okay but here's the thing, in order to become confident, you have to, you have to build confidence, you have to exercise confidence, right? So when like you go to the gym, you're not faking lifting weights, you're not faking being strong in order to get in shape. You're lifting weights and that creates the change inside you which makes you stronger. Um, but you have to do the same thing with confidence. So you do have to act like a more confident person to become a more confident person. That's, but that's true with like any growth, any growth whatsoever, you have to, act like a figure skater to learn figure skating. You have to act like a guitar player to learn guitar playing. You have to try to be a better guitar player or a more confident person than you are if you want to get that success, get that improvement. So it's not faking it, but it is absolutely pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. And if you believe that you are not confident and that anything, any kind of confident behavior is not something that you would do, then you have to deal with that belief first. Because a lot of people have very limiting beliefs about themselves, that, they, that they're not confident, that they're incapable of being confident, that acting confident would be insincere or not the real them. And if you have that belief, that belief is gonna hold you back. And it's the same as the belief like, oh, I'm, I'm not a good guitarist, so why should, I, why should I take a guitar lesson? I'm already not good. But that, that's, that's a really negative belief that will hold you back from everything in life. If you if you keep that, so you have to really confront that belief. But that's a, that's a good question because a lot of people think that a lot of people are led to believe that a lot of people your friends might make you might make you feel that your friends might be invested in holding you back from actually uh, being the kind of person that you want to be, and so they might say, "Oh, you're faking it." Um, don't listen to them. You've got to take that positive mindset. You've got to take that belief that you can you can improve. You can get better, you can do any of this stuff, and, because that's gonna be the thing that makes a difference in your life, and that's the way you, you achieve success. Um, got some more questions here. Um, so Julio says, uh, Julio says he has to go, but his question would be, what kind of confidence should you display with different types of women? For example, the one that plays hard to get, the shy one, etc. So that's a good question. I think, in essence, you know, you're always, the confident you is really the real you. And so you don't have to have a different kind of confidence. Um, I think definitely when you're talking about a woman who, let's say, maybe she's playing hard to get, you do want to make sure that you are projecting that you're the kind of guy who, who you like her and you feel like you're, you would be good for her and you take that kind of attitude into it. So if she says, oh, you know, I don't know if, uh, I want to go on this date, you say, no, we're going to have fun. I'm going to show you a really good time. Trust me, you're really going to like this. And that's the kind of confidence that you bring to it. Not, not for example, kind of arrogance that's like, oh, you know, I'm the best dude ever. 
uh, you should be happy to come out with me. You should be you should be flattered that I'm inviting you out. That's not gonna work. It's it's that's that's arrogance. That's the wrong kind of attitude. Instead, it's like no no no. You gotta you gotta come out with me. I'm gonna show you a really good time. You're really gonna like it. When can we meet up? Trust me. Don't be shy. All right. More questions. Um, is there a simple mantra I can repeat to myself in a fearful situation to remind myself of these concepts you've all spoken about in the show? A simple mantra. There's a bunch of mantras. Um, <laughs> I used to, I remember I really liked Dune and there was the litany against fear from the Dune, uh, 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 Dune books. Um, I, I can't remember that one off the top of my head. The, I think that instead of a mantra, what you really want to do is you want to practice focusing your attention outwards. All right. So you're not in, instead of saying something, because by definition, if you're saying something to yourself, you're not really present in the moment. You're not really being confident. Right. When you're playing, playing tennis, you're playing video games, you're doing anything at a high performance level. You're not sitting there going like, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I'm good at this. You don't want to have that voice in your mind. Instead, focus your attention out. Look at other people, ask yourself, how is that person feeling? Who, who, you know, I wonder, I wonder what's up with them. And if you focus your attention outward instead of inwards on yourself, that's going to make you more confident. It's going to distract you from the unconfident thoughts. Okay. Cause a lack of confidence is usually thinking about yourself. And so really what you have to do is instead of having some line that you repeat to yourself, it's distract yourself by focusing on something else. Sometimes I tell guys to like sing happy birthday, sing a song in your head. It's just because you want to get rid of whatever self-conscious thought is holding you back. If you are very unconfident, is it a good idea to pretend to be confident at the beginning of your journey in hopes of becoming confident one day soon? Yes. Uh, yes, you should. Um, I mean, you, should, you shouldn't feel afraid to like have doubts about things. You know, you don't want to be silly, but yeah, you should, you should practice doing really confident stuff. And uh, even if it's outside of your, your normal behavior, and you'll get better at it. And very soon, it will, be, uh, it will feel very natural to you. So you, might, so you might think about, you know, what kind of confident behavior are you not, are you avoiding? Maybe it's something like public speaking. Maybe it's something like, you know, taking the lead in a prod, uh, group uh, at work. And those are ex absolutely the kinds of things that you should, um, the, the kinds of things that you should be practicing in order to build your confidence. Um, when it comes to women, obviously you can practice your confidence by going up and talking to them. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you, you, the practice itself is worthwhile. It doesn't have to be um, really, really good, really, really over the top. You don't have to kick butt at it. You walk up to a girl and you say, hey, you look like fun. My name's Chris, what's your name? That's gonna get you out of your comfort zone. That's going to help you build that confidence. You're going to realize that women are way nicer to you than you realize. And even if you do wind up like being nervous and you don't, you don't say it the right way the first few times, even if you wind up maybe embarrassing yourself a little bit, don't worry about it. You will get better. That's how you get better. I mean, I had a, I, I, I had a friend recently who told me that they had they were traumatized because she'd done an open mic night and she sang a song and it was really bad. And I told her, I, my, I also play guitar and the first time that I sang a song at an open mic night, I was also really bad. And the second time I wasn't very good either. And the third time I was like, okay. And then like after four or five times I started to be pretty, I started to be at least decent at it. But that's, that's what you have to do. Nobody ever gets to be good without experiencing uh, sucking at some point in their life. So don't be afraid of it. And, and you, you do, you put yourself out there and you get good at it. And that, that, that anxiety, that like shaking, that tenseness, like when I was playing guitar and singing, like my, my voice would tighten up, that goes away. It goes away after a couple of times. But you have to push, you have to go through it. You can't avoid it. You can't avoid being nervous the first time you do something that like is, is well beyond your existing capabilities or your previously your previous capabilities. Mike asks, 
Uh, some off-topic questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that off. If, if Mike, if you're interested in talking about approaching and stuff like that, you should check out the Effortless Attraction webinar. Daniel Versetti's got something that's really really good about that. Um, William asks, is there a shortcut or fast track to confidence with women or anything else? Is there a shortcut? Yes. The shortcut is going out and doing it and really pushing yourself hard. All right. It's not really a shortcut. It's not like it's not like super short, like you can do it in three days, all right? It's a shortcut in that you can make a massive change in like a month, all right? You can make a really massive change in like three to six months. So like, that's not a long, that's, that's a shortcut, okay? That's a shortcut to confidence if you can do it in three months, all right? Um, but the secret is, it's, it's every single day pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and getting used to living outside of your comfort zone. And what happens is your anxiety threshold drops when you do that, all right? When you put yourself in anxious situations, controlled anxious situations, situations where, you know, you know you're not gonna get like murdered, all right? You put yourself in those situations, all of a sudden your body gets used to anxiety and no longer, you no longer start feeling anxiety over little things. So your body adjusts, your body wants to find homeostasis, right? So if you hide from anxiety, if you hide from your fear, if you hide from the things that you're not confident about, what all that happens is your body adjusts by making you more insecure, all right? And that's what happens to guys who wind up, you know, pulling away from social situations because they, they don't like them. What happens to guys who, who spend too much time on video games and, and things like that. All of a sudden, they, 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 they move into this world because they're, they're stressed out about real life, but then they get all stressed out. Then they continue to get stressed out because the body just, whatever is the most stressful thing in your life is gonna stress you out, no matter how unstressful your life is, all right? And so you want to avoid that that negative cycle, all right, where you're you're just in the habit of hiding from these things. John is saying thank you, thanks a lot, guys. Do we got any more questions? Let me just check here in on the um, the. Oh, let's just check in on the Google Hangouts here. Let's see where is that? Where is my Google Hangouts? All right, Google Hangouts. Do we have any questions here? Sarah, do we have any questions? Call on Sarah. I don't think so. I think we're I think we're we're out of uh, stuff to talk about. Sarah, any questions? Do you want me to ask a question, Chris? All right, we got Chuck here. Chuck's got some questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Hand leg, your technical shit a little better. Anyways, it's okay. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> Can always uh, count on you. With regard to your topic this evening, um, question is: um, I feel like if you feel like you're confident, you can sometimes become um, too much for people because I am very confident. Mm -hmm. And I go out and I then become, uh, I mean, it, it seems great in the beginning, but then it just sometimes is just a lot, you know? And uh, so just how do you gauge uh, how much confidence you need to be um, expunging on the world of how wonderful you are, you know? That is a, that is a very good question because there is... A downside to confidence you do sometimes get people who uh you grate people the wrong way especially when you're being assertive or when you're in a you know maybe you're in a uh, a conflict kind of situation with those people and the, the the here's the secret the secret is building that comfort and and doing a little bit of nice stuff uh, nice guy stuff like a little bit of manners and a little bit of like showing a little bit of extra compassion to people because when you are confident when people see you as a really confident guy they value that more right so if you come across if you come across a little bit too confident and then you give somebody a compliment all of a sudden it's like oh this guy's really cool I really like this guy okay, no, whereas if you sorry I just if you if you're a wimp and you come across as wimpy and not confident at all and you and and you give a compliment, people don't care, right? So when you when you build that confidence up, um, all of a sudden these like things like confidence, things like all the regular manner stuff that you're kind of taught, all of a sudden that stuff starts working way better than it than it ever did before. So that's an awesome question, Chuck. Thank you much, so much for calling up. And then we got Max has got one more question. He says, "Does meditation help with confidence?" 
And uh, yeah, I absolutely think that meditation does help with confidence. It's a little complicated because you, I think meditation helps you relax, helps you become present in the moment, which you can then use when you're in a in an anxiety pro provoking situation because you're better at it. You're better at just like calming your thoughts. Um, also, it's something you can use to um, you can use it to when you have certain thoughts that are holding you back from being confident. You can use meditation to help find those thoughts and sort of dig them out and challenge them. Um, and uh, in our Charisma Decoded class, I go over that in, in a lot of depth about finding out what, what kind of beliefs are holding you back from your uh, success. How do you identify those beliefs, um, find them and treat them. Um, and so we've got a little system for, for doing that as part of our Charisma Decoded uh, class. But that is a big help in building confidence. So anyway, guys, um, thank you guys so much for making it out. Thank you for another awesome LS Live. We are going to be skipping next Monday because of Easter. We're going to um, we're going to be not doing a broadcast next Monday, and then we're going to be doing a, a broadcast the following Monday. We're going to have um, Isaac uh, um, and a couple of other people. And it's going to be really good. And I don't know what the, su what the subject is uh, at this moment. So no broadcast next week, but we will have a broadcast again for you guys in two weeks. Thank you so much for coming out. And see you in two weeks, guys. Take care.